Welcome to the massive open online course in the subject computer science, the topic operating systems. This lecture is on Unix shell scripting basics. Earlier on we did a full case study on Unix. Unix began primarily as a pun, a redesign on a Multics project that was, that was declared a failure. Some of the brilliant designers from major computer organizations were participating in the Multics project. However, three people got together in Bell Laboratories that is Brian Kernigan, Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson and they created a kernel which was called Unix. Since Bell Labs was not able to market any software related products, they have given away this kernel to various academic institutions and the students who were doing computer science got into building things around this kernel. 71 Bell Laboratories put together all the utilities, everything that the students have built on the kernel and released it as an operating system called Unix. Unix was a roaring success, it is a phenomenally brilliant code. Many people have appreciated, many people knew how the in Unix internals were built and designed and lot of students were already trained on Unix in various academic institutions. They were becoming available right from day one in the industry. It is a folklore for many years, Unix happened in this manner. What was necessary to understand is that there is a very good reason to believe the fantastic code is readily available in the Unix operating system that can be used to build programs faster. The language that was fit for the Unix operating system has been C. Unix and C were made for each other. C is a middle level programming language that gives a very good connectivity to the application program, the system called Unix as well as the hardware. With C gaining lot of currency, lot of application programs were being written. However, the concern here was that how do I use the code written in operating system? It was through system calls. Application programming interfaces were called system calls and we had the portable operating system interface POSIX standards at various levels. Now the concern here is that should an application program be written to do a few things on Unix. There are several common things. For example, Unix did not have a very good user interface and the command line interface is very rudimentary. It will simply tell ls means list, cd means change directory, chmod means something else. Each of these commands were reasonably cryptic and you have to wait for the shell prompt. At this juncture, it is useful to note that whenever a user logs in, the Unix operating system creates a shell for the user where that, u that user has all access to what is permitted by the shell to interface with the operating system. Then why are we asking the user to type command line by command line? Whereas, the C programmers can use plenty of the Unix code to do better things. What are all the things at the command line that can be combined to make a sequence of commands run within the shell of the user? The user has logged in, the user has given the password, immediately the shell prompt comes. What is the shell prompt? That is what is the concern here. The shell prompt is this which says that there is a percentage sign and there is a prompt. The prompt is the black prompt. This is the shell prompt. The user has now logged in. The Unix system is waiting for the command to be typed by the user. It is a command line interface, very rudimentary interface. All Unix commands have been very cryptic. As I keep mentioning, computing was not meant for a sophisticated conversation using a language like human beings use. It is a very rudimentary language that can be used by the system software. Cryptic commands with plenty of switches, it is something like you know what we are talking about as a, a, a very, very awkward serious code which only the people who know the Unix operating system can use. This is a command prompt. The system is now waiting for the command. You can execute one command in one line. However, 
there is reason to believe as we progress in this lecture to combine a few commands much like we combine program statements. Is there a method in which I can combine the command lines in Unix on shell that is the reason why we think that shell is not merely a place where the user feels that the entire system as permissible by the shell is available to him or her. Whatever the shell permits on the Unix operating system is completely at the disposal of the user. The user is the king and he can do anything in that shell. Whatever this particular user is doing does not affect the other user. This is a level of protection which the Unix kernel has been providing to the users. Within the shell, everything that happens belongs to that user who has logged in with a proper login ID and a password. If there is any error in the way the user is working, first is it is limited to the shell, it does not percolate across other shells. It is a multi-user system. A great protection which is outside of the way in which we have been talking about file permissions and many other ways in the earlier lecture on protection. So, the shell is like this and it has a prompt, it is waiting for some, some command to be typed. Is there a way in which we can combine these commands to do better exercise? The shell is found in a hash bin directory, this is a born again shell. This can also be a prompt, you can straight away go to that slash bin directory to find out where is this bash bin slash bin directory is a place where all executables are loaded by the Unix operating system. You do not have to go far, you can find out from slash bin directory where exactly is this bash cell loc located born again shell. The slash bin has many binary programs which are executable directly, the shell is also one. At the time when the login happens, we presume that the systems administrator has configured the operating system in such a way that it will automatically go to the bin and activate, execute this bash shell to go back and give this prompt. Once this prompt comes, it is very clear that the bash shell corresponding to the user has been activated. This is from a current location, this is you have to specify precisely where this bin is, hash bang is a relative location from which the operating system can navigate you to the bin directory where the bash is. Bash is another program, it is a nice way of protecting not as a part of the operating system, but as a very good add-on, the most popular add-on to the operating system which was again developed in the manner which I have been talking about in Unix. So, what is it that we are talking about? The shell takes an input, input goes into the shell, there will be an output or error. The shell works, the shell program which you write is a sequence of acceptable commands in Unix and you can keep on doing that exercise. It has a way of taking one type of input called character. There is only one type of input acceptable by the shell that is called a character. With this one input type, one assignment statement, one repetitive construct and one decision statement, just these four features, you can mix and match hundreds of commands on Unix and they will run in a shell. So, which means if you want to run 10 commands, you do not have to type 10 times and hope that the output of one command will automatically be available for the input of the other command. That is a bigger headache we have. We want the output of one command to be available to the as an input for the other command. Combining commands is one, the next one is the output of one command must, must become the input of the other command or there is an error that is in execution. With these simple features, there is something called a shell script. Again, I wish to mention that the shell is an add-on program which the Unix has become very famous for. It gives you the clear feeling that you are completely isolated from any other user. The user who has logged in with the correct password is all that the shell permits 
whichever way the shell has been configured it works like that the speciality of the shell is you do not have to type 10 commands separately not only that with a simple character data type with an if then else statement with a while do and an assignment you can make sure that the output of one command is available as an input for another command it is a complete closed program in itself and it can be any program but there are a few popular shells anybody can write a shell we can write a shell program that behaves like this and systems administrator at the time of login will simply redirect the path to that corresponding shell it is like that and as soon as the user has logged in we will simply go ahead and then make this path available login will take you to this and from this you will see this prompt it is very simple whoever logs in you can have any shell written but the most popular shell appears to be the born again shell which was very very well used there are a few popular shells Stephen Bond, Steve Bond is called bin slash sh bin slash bash initially it was sh this particular sh was giving a dollar prompt as soon as this born again shell has come this was having better features it was more efficient and then we started using the uh, percentage prompt that is how it is the other shells c shell as i said your systems administrator can redirect the unix operating system to this bin slash csh or turbo c shell bin slash tch or corn shell bin slash ksh but what normally happens is a very simple way of uh, activating the bash cell in this manner we activate the bash cell that is the bash cell is activated at the login prompt it takes time please notice the way in which we are doing it is a it is a way in which I am interacting with the powerpoint and it takes this much time it goes and then activates the bash shell if you replace this with c shell you will get c shell if you replace it with corn shell ksh you will get corn shell for c shell you should do csh for corn shell you should give a ksh for turbo c shell you should give tcsh so there are three more shells which are popular but what is common to all these shells is a very simple idea called there is a character input input type is character single type there is an if then else construct there is a repetitive construct there is an assignment construct just with these four features you will get a phenomenal power of combining so many commands in unix hundreds of commands are there in unix which are waiting for you to execute which, which are waiting for you to use all these commands can be combined you do not have to do that command one by one you will simply go ahead and look at this input is given once it goes to the shell script each command is executed one by one the output of one command is automatically deemed the input of the other command you will get an overall output of several commands running in sequence all protected within the shell the user who have logged in will work within the permissible permissions of the shell this is a great protection and a great scripting which unix has been supporting from day one and one of the reasons why unix became very popular is because of this shell scripting which came native much later we have been talking about many scripting languages for the internet world the browser will know how to use that scripting language how to introduce how to execute that scripting language essentially it is combining a set of commands which were otherwise used separately using a simple programming set of features namely a data type and if then else construct a, a, a repetitive construct and an assignment construct so we have had this born again shell in this manner and what we need is an aside what do we mean by bin ideally all these shells are stored in slash bin you can create a slash user dot bin and store your own binary programs you can create one more in this manner you can have your own bin there is nobody who is preventing us from storing the shell anywhere here except that the operating system must be configured in such a manner 
that when so and so login with the correct password happens, you better go and locate the shell from any of these bins, anywhere it can be. You can keep it there, you can keep it in temp, you can keep it in dev, but as a matter of convention, we keep it in slash bin or slash user slash bin or user slash local slash bin, so that there is no confusion. All of us agree that slash bin is the directory where you find many binaries that can potentially be executed as soon as the login is found correct with the login and password. You can store it anywhere, request your systems administrator to redirect the Unix operating system to that particular place to execute whatever shell you want to be in. However, it has been a very nice open way of working on Unix where we have all those shells or all binaries completely arranged in slash bin or slash user slash bin. What is a shell script? It is a text file. What does it contain? It contains a set of instructions which are nothing but valid commands on Unix. They are all executable on their own. The command is executable. You can simply go to the shell prompt percentage, type that command, it is executed. But it is executed as a single command. Only one command, it gives you whatever you are expecting to give based on the command. It does not automatically mean that the output of this command is going into the input of the other command. They are completely isolated commands. However, most of the times we find a need to use a sequence of commands to get our things done. Input of one of that script will generate an output. For each command, that output is automatically fed as an input to the next command. It is an executable file. Take an example here cat greater than hello.sh less than my program. What does it do? It simply means that concatenate and type cat is a command which is called concatenate and type hello.sch take the input from a file called my program where is it it is in the relative direct relative directory of bin slash sh what does it contain it contains echo hello world my program chmod you change the permissions of this particular shell program hello.sh with an executable you simply type dot slash hello.sh you will get hello world as printed now why, where is this getting executed it is getting executed through the shell program or directly on the unix operating system now it appears that it is not the application program but your shell script that is printing hello world so what is the way in which we are doing we are taking the input from my program concatenate and type into hello.sh from my program which is located in slash bin slash sh what does it contain it contains echo hello world and my program is given chmod give executable permission to hello.sh automatically you can execute and you will get your print echo hello world echo is another unix command cat is one command echo is another command chmod is another command what we normally teach in c programming as a very first program print hello world is happening like this in a shell script where is it happening it is happening in the born again shell and we are using unix commands which are normal unix commands cat is a cat is a unix command echo is a unix command chmod is a unix command it changes the permissions hello.sh is that shell script it prints hello world so this is how it is a text file called my program it is having this much and the redirection is becoming obvious input to cat slash temporary my file it goes to the environment file how does it do that it shows cat less than input some input you get the input file you have to take whatever you have created in this input file into cat concatenate and type and you will get everything into this input file which can go into the shell script. That is how we have given that exercise. You have to change the permissions 
to make that file executable how to run every executable file will run otherwise what is it that we are doing we will normally write a C program use a compiler you will get an executable file called a dot out a dot out is the executable file on unix you simply type a dot out if there are no compilation errors there is no error in your program you will automatically get the compiled version as an executable file as a dot out the, 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 the program that you have written in a C language C programming language will get converted as an executable file a dot out at the shell prompt you simply type a dot out it will go ahead and execute the program. If you are compiling another program this a dot out will be rewritten by the executable code of the other program. So, this is why we have been very concerned about using the same name a dot out. a dot out is a very generic name it overrides whereas in the shell program you can give many shell names. You can change the name of the shell what we are doing is like the compiler and the unix go together in creating a dot out using the sequence of commands we are making it executable and what we have found in the process is a way of making it work in a manner which becomes very very obvious like this laser pointer this is what we have done we made this file executable therefore dot slash dot is a current directory in the current directory hello dot sh is there. Now, you can create many more names there is only one way of doing this that is the bound shell which we have been talking about and what we have done is very simple we have made sure that the executable code is written and you get the print finding the program path this is what I have been talking about where is the shell program that is the question you can in theory replace it by a path you can create hello dot sh anywhere right now it is in the parent directory and directly underneath that it is hello dot sh it has been stored there and it works in that manner. So, what we have been talking about is a way in which you should locate the shell a way in which you should locate the user program and instruct accordingly. So, what is the next step that we are talking about you can say that it can be in vs user dot bin dot echo this command echo can be found in a bin directory echo dot path it will tell where is that command found it will tell the unix the unix operating system will clearly tell if you use this shell scripting variable dollar path it will tell where is this echo command echo is also a binary which is already loaded. So, for this echo dot path this much of exercise is happening you can locate that path in this many ways and it is such a longish path that you may not want to type each time it becomes a very big boredom to type such long paths. So, what we have therefore, done is to see how we can have variables and environment as I said hello dot sh is out there if you simply type hello dot sh without doing everything that I have said it simply says command not found hello dot sh is not a unix command that will run automatically you will have to make it a unix command using all the steps that I have been talking about earlier path you can locate where is that path you can always find out where the path is echo dot user you can definitely bring in who is the user by simply having dollar user whoever is the user at the login will automatically be shown on the screen this is the fellow who has logged in password is already stored in a password file if you want to you can go ahead this this user's name is borwich and he has created a bin for himself because the the original bin of the unix is having hundreds of binary programs it takes lot of time to go to that slash bin and locate the 
binary program which you want to execute. Instead, if you are very confident that you will use only half a dozen executable commands, you please copy all those into your own bin directory, it will be much faster. You do not have to spend time talking to the kernel, from the kernel go to the bin, from the bin locate the executable and then do it saves plenty of time. So, Borwich could have created his own bin and you do everything out of that bin. So, this is how the, the way the syntax is, is speaks of itself. So, what is the environment, how was the shell created? What is it that the shell will permit you to do and what it does not permit you to do? That is told by this command called environment which is so frequently used. Environment is the command which tells where is the shell created, what are all the things it allows you to do, what are all the things you cannot do therefore. We talk positive dot the, at, at the shell prompt you simply put E and W and it will tell you what exactly the shell is capable of making you do on the programming front. So, next we talk about the path, the new variables, there are these many terms. Welcome to shell scripting, we saw input, output and error. Please understand that the Unix operating system simply gives a question mark when there is an error. Input is known, output is known and error. Path chmod, chmod will make it executable by default, the shell script by a different name that you want to call hello.sh or x.sh, x1.sh, whichever way you name the shell script by default, it is not an executable command you will have to make it an executable command by using what is called the ch which is here. So, obviously there the chmod command has to be used to make it an executable. The path where is that shell script, where is the bin file, do you want to store it along with hundreds of bin files in the unix or cleverly make a copy in your own directory, whatever it is you will know who the user is, where the path is and the environment which tells how that shell is created. It is a very nice idea which has made unix very popular because within the shell script you can do lots of things, you do not need to write a C program, it behaves just like a program. A simple character type is there and how do you learn all this? There is a man file, man is a manual, man bash is manual, man cat is concatenated in type, man man you can talk about the manuals manual. Now, the concern here is that this manual occupies so much of space, we were refraining from loading the manual on the unix operating system we have to switch to the manual, bash reference cards, all this takes lot of space for so many years main memory was very expensive. Now, we talked about so many features of the shell programming, these are the continuing lines, you put one, one command, one slash like this, you should write line by line. You can definitely write it as you go ahead, it is a single line this particular slash is a very long command line. It appears that it is typed on multiple lines, but is actually a single line. This is a feature of the way in which the unix shell operates and then we started talking about exit status, if it is 0 it is true, ls it is not existing, the command is not existing. We can talk about echo, we can talk about a test command. Essentially, shell scripting combines the existing unix commands into a simple program, all these are unix commands. There is a logic statement, we need to understand this, there is an if then else statement which sees like this, if a file exists, if then else, which we know in C programming, there is a for loop which is like this, the syntax is like this. You can put all these commands, a character type, an assignment type, an if then else and a for loop in a single file, make it executable and run, the code runs, a while loop is there, a counter is there, we can talk about sourcing the code from some other file, concatenate and type, all these are simple ways 
of working with variables, character type, assignment, if then else, for loop or while loop and make a simple program that executes within your shell. You need to understand carefully the fact that the shell script is something which is like a program that is created for you to combine a few command lines. The output of one command is naturally going as an input to the other command. It takes very careful programming. As much attention you give to C programming, you should give attention to shell scripting on Unix. Born again shell is very popular. The prompt is percentage. It takes a long time to become a bash guru. The, these commands operate directly using the commands of the operating system. The damage that they can potentially cause is also very high. So, you should be very careful about it. Spend that much time learning shell scripting. It is very easy. Only one character type, only one assignment, only one if then else, only one for loop, only one while until loop. With these five, you can create a fascinating range of combinations of the existing Unix commands, store them at a place where you want, give it a name of it of your own choice, make it an executable, run the shell script. Thank you.